Um, where do you even start with a game of football like that? Come on, City. Uh, we're Man City and we fight till the end. After the world imploding on Manchester City Football Club, 2-1 down, and who steps up off the bench? Leroy signing for a rocket into the top corner. And then that man, uh, Raheem Sterling, shows how clutch he can be in situations like that. An Edison assist, 3-2, uh, and from the pits of despair, dis like staring defeat in the face, we've somehow uh, won that game. And that was so, so much fun. Um, I've gone through a, an absolute whirlwind of emotion during that I'm knackered I'm absolutely exhausted from just watching that game I'm exhausted for watching Manchester City Football Club because uh, that's what we do to you and that's why I love this club because we do fight to the end we do things the hard way um if people can question our mentality uh, but today um that shows what this club is about. We're now favourites to go through to the quarterfinals. Rightfully so. We've got three away goals, even without Fernandinho and Otamendi in the next game. Uh, and that was um, an absolute crazy game. Right, I'll go back to the structured format of this video anyway now after those initial thoughts. Uh, I want to say thank you as well to John Davis and David Taran, my newest patrons. Guys, thank you very much for your uh, very appreciated support. You're absolute heroes. If you want to get involved too and get involved in the shout outs and all that kind of stuff and the Patreon Q&A and the private Discord group I've got going on, um, Patreon dot com forward slash esteem company if not just carry on watching these videos carry on giving a big like up and subscribe if you're new as well don't forget but yes that game um it was a weird one wasn't it it was a very weird game before the game and uh, there was a lot of talk about who was going to start and who wasn't the big surprise for me was sarney was left on the bench despite being against his former club and the weirdest decision by far well not that weird because we've seen it before was Fernandinho in defense uh, alongside otamendi with laporte at left back now we've seen him obviously do it uh, to great effect recently um i wasn't expecting it at all, but given the fact there was no stones, I could kind of understand that. That, that meant we saw Gundogan set a bit deeper uh, with De Bruyne and David Silva, Bernardo out wide on the right, uh, Sterling on the left, and Aguero through the middle. Um, and Schalke lined up with very defensive formation with like five kind of round at the back. Uh, so City. Kind of went out and we went basically into the first half relatively positively. We started the first half pretty well. We were largely the better team. Aguero was pretty lively. We had a decent little header from Aguero after a nice little set piece. Uh, Sterling was beating the fullback repeatedly. And then came the goal, uh, which was uh, David Silva capitalising on a mistake and freeing Aguero, who had an easy finish. The referee tried to rule it out. Well, he looked for a reason to rule it out. It was a bit of a weird thing to try and go back to the Laporte header, given the fact that they'd had the ball as well. I mean, it was given in the end, but it was a strange moment. And it was a precursor about what was to come in that first half the game went absolutely crazy now VAR I want to like VAR I really want to like it but my biggest problem is it's giving like kids a gun because refs are absolutely useless and they can't get it right with the basics anyways and to give them these tools to get it even more wrong just makes it even more frustrating for me, that isn't a pen. Uh, you can argue all day, um, I'm sure you all do, but for me personally, that isn't a pen. Um, he doesn't deliberately move his hands towards the ball. His hands aren't in a natural position, and he actually tries to get his hands out of the way of the ball. And then to give it a yellow card as well as that, it implies that he was intentional. And the fact that it took about four or five minutes to actually make the decision. What the fuck is going on? Seriously, absolutely ineptitude of the highest level. So, so, so bad. Right, if it's four or five minutes to make a decision, uh, then it's not a clear and obvious error. And also the fact it came out at half time like the screens weren't even working properly so how can you even make that call the referee's meant to go over and check if he's not too sure he couldn't do that because the pitch side screens weren't working so you have to trust some random guy there, which is fair enough. But it goes against the entire protocol of the thing. Not clear and obvious. Took forever. In my opinion, it wasn't a penalty and the screens weren't working. An absolute farce. And then a the second goal, we were rattled. Finandino did foul the guy, but the guy's offside in my opinion. The guy next to him is offside, and this whole, oh, he's not interfering. Well, he is. He's going for the ball. He gets fouled from an offside position when he was going for the ball. If he wasn't offside, uh, Finandino wouldn't be making that foul. To me, that's offside, and it shouldn't be a penalty either. But the weird thing about it is that they didn't even look at that one. They glossed over it in seconds. Like, are they not going to check that at all? It drove me absolutely mad watching that first. It was tiring to watch, uh, and the players were largely rattled. Now, I do agree that, in general, they have to get over it at some point, but you can see why the confusion came about. How often do games stop for four or five minutes for a goal decision to be analysed? It's just a weird kind of moment and the refs were largely useless. Into the second half and it was kind of uh, we started pretty well in the second half we came out quite live. We had a couple of decent moments, uh, you know, a long ranger or two from De Bruyne. Bernardo looked a bit lively but we couldn't quite break them down and then Osamendi had the game turning moment. A pretty soft yellow really as well it was a relative soft yellow card and he got sent off for his second yellow uh, for a red card um, and after that a lot of the world was was going to cave in around us. It wasn't good. City weren't playing well. Um, 
And it was very frustrating to watch. Then out of nowhere, Leroy Sahani came on, and what an absolute pearl of a free kick. Why wasn't he starting? I'll get onto him in a bit, but he should be starting, in my opinion, against his former club. A phenomenal goal. And then to top that, out of nowhere, uh, Ryan Sterling scores in the last minute of the game from an Edison long punt up the field. A cool, composed uh, finish. Then cue delirium in the stands. An absolutely fantastic result in the end, given the circumstances. Now, individually... Uh, Edison didn't have much to do, couldn't get really near the penalties, a great assist at the end when he mattered, so I'll take that. Defensively, I don't think we were that great, really. Finandino did show a bit of naivety with the foul. I mean, he was offside, but he gave the referee a chance to make that, and it was a foul, so that was a bit of naivety there, which is understandable given his position. I don't think Laporte looked that comfortable at left-back, and Otamendi had a bit of an Otamendi kind of game, but he's not at his best. And Walker um, didn't really do much wrong, if being honest, but he was like part of a back four that didn't really shine on the day. Gundogan was just Gundogan at his worst in terms of me and ineffective and passive uh, it wasn't his game at all and I thought yeah, on a return to a German team he would have been a lot more up for it than that but he just didn't play that well in the holding role he's normally a lot better kind of doing those kind of register rest kind of chip passes but it just didn't quite come off for him De Bruyne looked kind of lively but once again it didn't come off for him either David Silva didn't play well other than the assist which is very good and I've got to give him the credit for that he was very sharp in the tackle there um, to win the ball and pay it to Aguero he didn't play that well which is kind of worrying he's not in great form at the moment as we discussed before previous videos I don't doubt his quality and people have tried to write off an Andino early to start of the season so I'm not going to let him do the same now for David Silva but he isn't playing that well Sterling was a mixed one I actually thought he started the game pretty well for the first half an hour then his head went massively like everyone else's did and he was largely like disappeared for ages but then he came up trumps right at the very end there and that goal shows how how much he's improved in general as a player because a long time ago there's no way Sterling's finishing that his composure his coolness now when it most matters um that is his biggest strength. There are some signs still like earlier in the game when he should have shot and he kind of faffed around, but that's City's problem just as much as it is. But that goal, when it mattered them, absolutely huge from a huge player. Bernardo on the right, I thought he was tenacious. Uh, he offered a lot kind of in terms of energy as he always does. And he looked a lot more effective in the second half when he was more through the middle, running at people. He played as, a, as kind of like a false nine when Aguero went off. Um, and I thought he did himself pretty bad, really. He didn't have a hold of the game in the way that he would have wanted to, but he did his best, um, even though it wasn't a classic performance from him. Aguero got his goal, was quite lively, and then went off quite early. A lot of people are saying he went off because of the Carabao Cup final because he's our only recognised striker with Gabriel Jesus, a current injury doubt. So I understand that, but I also would have liked him on the pitch. But in the end, I guess it didn't really matter. I'm not sure if Pep knew it was going to end up that way, but it did. Leroy Sane, for me, is one that should have started. Leroy Sane is the exact opposite of Ryan Sterling in terms of these games. I understand why he doesn't play Sterling at Anfield. I don't agree, but I understand of it because Sterling, it seems to get to him. But Sane is the kind of guy, like his ego is the size of the moon. He's so, so, so confident. He's the kind of person who revels in the attention. And for me, against this former club, he should have been starting because he would have wanted to go to that stadium against some people that he knew uh, and proved a point. We should have started him. We should have to have started him. And you can just tell how confident he was when he stepped up to that free kick. An absolute ronaldo S free kick in his prime. That Absolutely phenomenal. That was pure confidence. That was pure and arrogance as well. That's what I love about Leroy Sane when he's at his best because he believes he can do everything with the ball. And he can really. He's that fantastic. Uh, and it was a game-changing cameo from him. Overall, this is um, a good result in the end in weird circumstances. There's obviously not something quite right in the Champions League with Manchester City at the moment because it's making life look really difficult. Pep seems to be a little bit anxious about it. I'm not sure if he quite believes that the club have bought into it yet and he said as much in meetings and all that kind of stuff and in press conferences. Um, and the team do look a little bit rattled when things don't go our way. Is that a thing in general that we should worry about when City feel hard done by and it happens every now and then? We do seem to go into our shell a little bit. You think of the Newcastle game was a good example recently. We need to get past that somehow. We did today by the courtesy of a brilliant free kick from Leroy Sane but the sign weren't there that we were playing ourselves out of that funk anyway it just happened by a piece of brilliance um in general it is something to consider but now we go to the Etihad and we bring out Schalke there with three away goals uh leading 3-2 we won't have Fernandino, we won't have Otamendi, but hopefully Stones will be back by then. Uh, Gundogan, I guess, will want to go and play a little bit deeper. Um, and I think we're in a good position now. Schalke aren't particularly great when they've got to force the game largely. They can't score many goals at the moment. So if we go there and we control the game and we actually kind of play how we can do, it should be okay. 
it isn't ideal. I can understand why people are frustrated by this game. But we have to have a little bit of perspective on nights like this. The Champions League uh, is always a bit of a leveller. Teams always up their game, usually in these kind of circumstances. And Schalke, given how poor they've been in the league recently, and they've been really poor, they have. There's no point denying that. And we can't really use it as an excuse too much, the whole VAR stuff. And I've just done that, I guess, myself. But in fairness, they are a level below us, so we've got to consider that. But in their defence... The fact that they're not in the Bundesliga tonight might have been a bit of a... Um, it might have been a relief for them, really, because sometimes you go there with no expectation and you can just kind of play a game and not worry about it. I mean, as it was, their only goals came from weird decisions, in my personal opinion. Uh, but they kind of, you know, they defended robustly and the Stasis had a good game against his former club. Uh, so the Schalke made it difficult for us, but I still think now we've got too much to um, worry about them uh, back at the Etihad Stadium. I think we should go through now. I think we should. It was a weird night of football, an exhausting night of football, but that's why I love Manchester City Football Club. What is the point in watching us cruise every single game? Sometimes it's fun to have a game like this because you watch everyone kicking off on Twitter uh, and then you see a result like this and you think... <laughs> Uh, why did we doubt this team? Uh, we're still in full competitions now. We've got the Carabao Cup, obviously. We've got the FA Cup. We're in good position in the Premier League. Fingers crossed United do us a favour. Uh, we're in a very good position now to progress, hopefully, through to the quarterfinals, um, despite some weird hiccups along the way. Don't doubt this team. They have got the quality there. Fingers crossed we can actually get through. And anyway, guys, what did you make of that whirlwind of events? It was a weird night, a weird night of football, but that's much to see for you. Uh, all that matters is that we won 3-2 somehow. Ryan Sterling, Leroy Sane, Edison coming up trumps at the end, guys. Guys, you're absolute heroes. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Uh, thanks for all the support recently as well on the Patreon and everything else. Thanks for all the likes and the comments and everyone being dead nice. Don't forget if you are new to this channel, make sure you subscribe for loads of Manchester City content in the coming weeks. And there'll be a preview soon. I don't know when, probably like um, Friday, I reckon, of the Carabao Cup game in a bit.